fuck, the angels are here, I felt my chest grip. Tramp wants you to wait in the garage until you're called, Roy continued. No one else knows anything more than that, George. Psycho shook his head. I'd hate to be in your shoes, brother, he said. <laughs> Just don't let them see you shaking when you walk in. I ain't shaking, I replied as calmly as I could. Oh no, check out your cigarette. Psycho was right. The Marlboro was shaking between my fingers like a dog shitting tacks. He and Big Roy escorted me to the attached garage, which was jammed with all kinds of well-organized tools and motorcycle parts. Good luck, said Psycho, smiling beneath his droopy mustache as he slammed the garage door shut. Right away I was looking for a way out, but the only exit was through a single door leading into the house. Beyond it, the Vogel's national leadership and members of the San Bernardino Hells Angels had gathered to decide my fate. And the longer I sweated in that garage, the more convinced I was they gathered for a lynching. Lord, this is your work I'm doing, I reminded the man upstairs. Keep me safe. I paced the floor puffing my cigarette and stopped to examine an enormous black and white photograph of Terry the Tramp that he'd maybe blown four feet high and hung on the garage wall. Every Vogel had seen that picture. In it, Tramp is posing with his 1950s vintage coffin tank chopper, Lady in the Tramp, while gripping a double action western rifle in one hand like he's John fucking Wayne. Tramp had reproduced that image on everything from t-shirts to playing cards and sold it at a hefty markup to his loyal subjects. Christ, the man had an eagle bigger than his beer gut. I was reminded of a night we spent in a hospital room playing dominoes a few months before his tramp recovered from a heart condition. The man was a chain smoker and cereal coffee drinker just like me, but what pushed his weakened heart over the edge was a blonde bimbo that almost fucked him to death. With Green Nation's International P flat on his back and vulnerable to being smothered with his own pillow, Crash and I were called in to take one of the round-the-clock security shifts. I swear, it was like guarding Don Vito Corleone. The nurses were laughing at us standing in the hospital corridor, arms folded, protecting our president from would-be assassins. When Tramp called us into the room, we found fearless leader propped up in bed, hooked to a heart monitor and an intravenous drip. Immediately, he pointed at Crash, who he must have overheard on the phone, complaining to his wife about the shit-ass detail. Not you, Tramp growled. You get the fuck out of here. Crash ducked out fast and Tramp smiled. Hey George, what's going on? Nothing much, just here to watch you, Tramp. Well, sit the fuck down and let's play some dominoes. Nothing bonds two grown men quite like playing bones in the wee hours. As we laid those tiles down, Tramp shared his war stories of the good old days, including how he came to be International P of the Green Nation back in 1986. At the time, the Vogels were a dying club, he explained, led ineffectually by a motorcycle outlaw named Leonard Barella. As membership withered, Tramp's older brother, Parts, heard of an upcoming officer's meeting in Desert's Hot Springs. Parts told his little bro, who was P of the San Gabriel chapter at the time, that he was just the man to turn things around and lead the Vogels back to glory. Lenny Barella sucked balls, Tramp continued. Made a lot of bad decisions for the club. So I told my two buddies, Sonny and Jerry the Jew, that I was going to take over the leadership. And we rode out to the officers meeting. The Hot Springs chapter had parked all these shit ass trailers in a big circle around the fire pit. And Lenny and I met in the middle to decide who would be the next international peak. Visions of classic western showdowns danced in my sleep star brain. With Terry the Tramp as Clint Eastwood and Lenny Barella as Lee Van Cleef. I'd already warned Jerry the Jew that if that bastard comes at me, I'm gonna kill him, Tramp said. So, did you kill the bastard? I'd mumble barely away. Didn't have to. Leonard stood up to me at first, but then all his support bailed. Once that happened, he was done. He left the club and never came back. Tramp paused to sniff the air. Oh, fuck, he said. I think I shit myself. <laughs> Standing in Tramp's garage, waiting on my moment of reckoning with the Hells Angels, I understood just how the man had felt in the hospital bed, because I was about to shit myself, too. I thought about calling John to see if that San Bernardino detective had made it to Hesperia, but
but before I could reach the next tail, the door to the house opened and Rhino appeared. Fuck me. This was the same brutal bastard who zip-tied poor Shorty, that Boggles hang around from Burdue, then blew his brains out. And goddamn, he was big. Let's go, said Rhino stone-faced. I crushed the cigarette underfoot and followed that monster like a condemned man headed for the gallows. Holy shit, Lord. This is where you've led me? What the hell is the matter with you? Why didn't you make me listen? I should have got off at that last exit. Damn it, I should have turned right. I stepped in the tramp's kitchen, sauna hot and reeking of musty sweat and body odor. Jammed inside that cramped space and the adjoining dining room were seven grim-faced outlaws flying their colors, four of them wearing red and white. A trio of Hell's Angels was seated at the dining room table, each with a revolver resting in front of them. Not good. The fourth angel was leaning his shoulder against the kitchen wall with a cocky grin on his face. It was the same asshole I decked at the Crossroads Bar and Grill. Take a seat, Prospect. Terry the Tramp was speaking. He motioned to the empty seat between him and Tata. The moment I sat down, Rhino took a standing position directly behind me, blocking my exit. Definitely not good. You know why you're here? Tramp asked me right off. I was about to open my mouth when one of the angels leaned over the table. Fuck this asshole, he ain't even patched. Don't matter, Tata shot back. He rides with us. He's a fucking prospect, spat the angel. Give him to us and we'll settle this right now. I felt my heart jump. The angels were going to drag me into the Mojave and do me right there. But I wouldn't go easy. Hell no. Not without a fight. Now my brain went into overdrive. I needed an escape plan. I'd have to take Rhino down first. No easy trick. Maybe a quick upward thrust into that thick neck might pop the carotid. You ain't taking our brother nowhere, came Rhino's voice like a bullhorn above my head. Man, I could have kissed that mullet-headed son of a bitch. He's no brother, the angel snapped. I said it ain't happening, snarled Rhino, glaring down at him. Strike a match in that tension, and the whole damn room might have gone off like Mount St. Helens. Everybody just calmed the fuck down. This was the biggest and hairiest of the Hell's Angels who spoke. All right, Prospect, he said to me. Why'd you hit him? I nodded toward the smirking angel leaning against the wall. That dude said, why don't you get some real colors? I took that as disrespect, so I popped him. All eyes now swung toward my accuser. That how it happened? The big angel asked. Fuck no, like I told you. That prick swung for no good reason. You lying sack of shit, I exploded. Fuck you, prospect, he barked back. We ain't getting nowhere like this, interrupted Tramp. Let's just stick them both in the backyard and let them fight it out. Rhino clapped a meaty paw on my shoulder. What about it, Prospect? You good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that, I said without hesitation. What about you, Tramp? asked my opponent. The smirk was already wavering on that lion's... The smirk was already wavering on that lion bastard's face. He squirmed for a moment, then shifted a nervous glance toward his brothers at the table. Check it out, said Rhino with contempt. He's a goddamn pussy. I'll fight him, volunteered the angel who wanted me buried in the desert. Fuck you will, bellowed Rhino. If that's the way it's gonna be, let's just go four on four and settle it that way. The Hell's Angels weren't so hot on that idea, especially with Rhino fighting for the other team. So the two clubs bickered for the next few minutes, just like the good old days, until my gutless opponent finally caved under pressure and copped to the lie. Now his three amigos were pissed. They'd put their asses on the line and been embarrassed. As the angels mounted their choppers and rumbled off toward San Bernardino, Rhino, Tata, and Tramp were gleaning clear back to the molars. Tramp even wrapped me in a bear hug and asked if I wanted a drink. Hell yeah, I wanted a drink. Hell yeah, I wanted a drink. Hand me the whole fucking bottle. I was a nervous wreck. Not too long after that, the unofficial truce between the Vogels and the Hells Angels began to unravel. The first crack appeared when the red and white jumped some greenies in Hollywood. Then, a few weeks later, the Sons of Hell were turned loose on Green Nation in the San Jacinto Valley. Of course, I couldn't give a rat's ass. 
If those two old enemies wanted to take turns pounding each other, that was fine with me. I was just happy to be alive and relieved 22 Green was still on track. As an added bonus, I'd managed to get the best of the mighty Hells Angels, first at the Crossroads Bar and Grill, then again in Tramp's Kitchen. As far as the Vogels were concerned, I was their Flavor of the Month Golden Boy. Tramp later awarded me the V-Patch for my cut, emblematic of a member who brings honor to the club. For seven long months, my time as a Vogel prospect had been a humiliating and hellish ride, a stretch longer than most candidates were forced to endure. But within a week of that meeting in high desert, I was patched in the Green Nation.